Hi there and welcome to this tutorial on how to use your mPrint machine with Autodesk Netfab. In this video I will take you through how to set up your machine and import a part. Brilliant, so let's get going. So the first thing you want to do is actually set up your machine within Netfab. So what we can do is we can go to My Machines in the top left. You might have a few of your own machines in here and to use and add the mprint machine we click the add machine button here type in one click metal and within that select the mprint machine and click add to my machines fantastic on clicking open it'll open it up in the browser tree on the left as you can see on the right this little window is opened up showing that you've got your build statistics machine configuration and your current part information available. We will talk more about the machine configuration in another tutorial. And regarding the current part, this is the next stage to actually add a part to our machine. To add a part, you can drag and drop it or use the add part option on the top left in the ribbon under the home tab. Doing either of these will present you with an import dialog. As you can see from the dialog, there's some errors associated with our mesh. Don't worry, we'll come to this in the next step. Fantastic. So we have our part in our machine and you can see there's a little error triangle with this part. And that says, as per the import dialog, that this part is broken. And so we need to do a repair. We can enter the repair part module in the home tab. And here we can run various scripts to repair our part. You can see where the errors are in this part and we go to status and update. You can see that we have two shells, um, we have multiple holes and inverted triangles. Go to our repair scripts, we can see what each one does. And to run a repair script, we will click the run repair script on the bottom right, select the repair script that we want to run and click execute. Fantastic, that looks like it's sorted it. To apply it, simply click apply repair. And I'll keep the old part. Brilliant. So you can see our repaired part here. I'm going to hide the other one. Now we have our part in our machine. We can now orient it for printing. We can do this manually or automatically. If you already know the orientation that you wish to print your part, and or have designed it for a certain orientation, you can move it and orient it manually and you can use some of these options at the top in the ribbon. Or you can simply use these handles to rotate your part. The part has been pushed 3mm above the bill plate as per this option in the machine configuration. And this is set to 3mm. If we do not know what orientation we wish to print the part yet, what we can do is select the part and click Orient Part on the right or at the top of the ribbon. And what we can do is we can use the Automatic Orientation tool. By selecting the critical angle and using this basic ranking system, we could of course do a custom ranking. We can click Search Orientations and the software will generate a range of orientations for us based on certain orientation factors. You can see these on the right. I can click through some of the results and you can see a lot of them are the same but then some of them are vastly different. We can see probably that the first few are the best orientations. We can also see the associated values with those orientation factors on the right in this table. Once we've found an orientation we like, we can click OK. And fantastic, that's orientated the part for us. Fantastic, that's the first stage done. And next we'll move on to the support structure for the part and the duplication of the part if we want to print multiple parts.